sing to me, oh muse. The Odyssey, an original adaptation written and retold for you by John Buckeridge. Chapter 4 The Hero in a Dress When Odysseus woke to the sound of the ocean on the shore, for a moment he was convinced he had dreamed the raft and the storm and he was still on Calypso's island. But as the various parts of his body began to check in with him, reporting cuts, serious bruising and no small amount of seawater still resident in his lungs, he knew the storm was no dream. Groggily, he hauled himself to his feet and staggered off to find fresh water. He had not stumbled far when he heard the sound of a river flowing and voices shouting. Odysseus didn't know it, but the voices belonged to a young lady by the name of Nausicaa and her handmaids, who had come to the river to wash some clothes. Shortly after that, though, they decided that was actually a bit boring and had pulled out a ball to start playing with. Leaping in and out of the water, they threw the ball to each other, splashing back and forth and shrieking with laughter. Unfortunately, Odysseus's storm-addled mind was unable to differentiate shrieks of laughter from shrieks of panic. Despite his exhaustion, the warrior hero within him leapt into action and he threw himself forward towards the banks of the stream. Fear not, ladies, I will protect you from... Ah. There was a long, awkward silence as he looked at Nausicaa and her handmaids, and they looked at him. All of him. Because as the staring contest went on, he was struck by the horrible realisation that he was completely naked. At that precise moment, a large leaf, which had been doing quite a lot of important work until then, decided it was bored of its job and fell to the ground. The silence went on. Oh dear said Odysseus, and hastily grabbed hold of a tree branch to cover himself. Making a mighty effort to restore some dignity, Odysseus addressed the startled ladies. My ladies, I do apologise for, well, all of this, frankly. I am a shipwrecked traveller who washed up on your shores last night. I don't even know where I am or who I should ask for help. Can you point me in the direction of the lord of this land? You're a fine one to talk about pointing, snorted a voice to uproarious giggles from the assembly of ladies. Odysseus looked round as the voice's owner stepped out of the river and addressed him. My name is Nausicaa, and the lord of this land happens to be my father. This here is Phaeacia that you've arrived on. Princess Nausicaa, said Odysseus, desperately wishing the branch he was holding onto had more leaves on it. I am your humble servant. Please give me whatever help you can. For starters, some clothes would be wonderful. And that was how Odysseus, still ragged and half-covered in leaves, found himself in front of the king and queen of the Phaeacians, wearing a dress that was several sizes too small for him. He bowed deeply, but not too deeply, blushing to his ears as he begged for aid. Why, of course, good fellow, said the king expansively. We Phaeacians never turn away a stranger in need. May I ask how it is you came to us wearing a dress, though? Odysseus was just thinking of a delicate way to phrase it when Nausicaa piped up from behind him. He was naked by the river, father, she smirked. Turned up while we were washing clothes gave us all quite the shock. Odysseus wasn't sure it was possible for him to blush any deeper than he was, but he made a heroic attempt anyway and began to stammer an explanation. Well, uh, you see... Uh, the mermaid, uh, sh- uh, she told me to um, uh, d- to disrobe in the storm, and and he flailed for something that would bring sense to the story. And, 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 magic scarf, he finished. A magic scarf, asked the king, clearly unconvinced. Oh, for heaven's sake, Alcinous, said his wife, Queen Arete. Can't you see the poor man is confused? He's clearly been through quite the storm, and to finish it all with such pointed embarrassment. You got the pointed bit right, piped up Nausicaa to the delight of her handmaids. That's enough, Nausicaa, harumphed her mother. Odysseus had never heard someone harumph before, but that was definitely what had just happened. Alcinous! We must give the man food, rest, a bath, and most importantly, clothes. We can ask for his story later. You're quite right, Ariti, my love, quite right, conceded the king. Come, stranger, take your rest, and you can tell us your tale tomorrow. The next morning, Odysseus awoke, feeling sluggish. 
He yawned, stretched, and shrieked as he suddenly realized he wasn't alone. Leaning over him was a tall, thin, hook-nosed man wearing a healer's robes. No need for alarm, I'm just checking how you're doing, said the man. Those bruises should heal up nicely, those cuts are nothing too bad. You've been through the wars, though, haven't you? Quite the collection of old scars and injuries, I say. He began prodding at Odysseus, tracing the scars and wounds, and Odysseus felt distinctly like a prize horse or a favoured hound as he was manipulated. Just the one war, said Odysseus, wincing as the healer prodded at a particularly nasty spot. But it was a big one. Does that hurt? said the man. Only when I breathe, said Odysseus glibly. It was a bad one. He picked it up after an argument with a chariot in Troy. He'd lost. Yes, said the man. It's the rib. Never quite healed right. Hold on. The healer was behind Odysseus, but he could have sworn that there was a shimmering in the air at the corner of his vision. He was swiftly distracted from that thought, though, as his ribs glowed white hot and there was a popping sound. For a moment, Odysseus wasn't sure whether he was about to pass out or turn a somersault. He felt the area the man had touched, and it felt marvellous. That'll do nicely, said the healer, in the tone of a shipbuilder admiring a finely made vessel. He was packing up his bag and moving to the door. What in the name of Zeus just happened? asked Odysseus. He felt better than he had in years. But the hook-nosed man ignored him. Yes, your scars tell quite a story, but the fact that you're still here tells me you usually come out on top in the end. Could you just tell me? tried Odysseus, but the man carried on regardless. In fact, he said, fixing Odysseus with a piercing gaze from pure grey eyes, if I were a betting man, I'd say that you're likely to come out of most things on top sooner or later. He winked at Odysseus, and then he was gone. What a strange fellow, thought Odysseus, and followed him out into the corridor to call out to him. But the man was gone. Odysseus searched up and down the corridor, but there was no sign of him. The healer had vanished. He went back into his room, shaking his head at the strangeness and marvelling at how good his ribs felt as he dressed. Before long, there was a knock at his door as he was summoned to the Phaeacian throne room. Walking in, though, he was astonished. Almost half the kingdom was gathered there, and all of them looking at him with expectant eyes. You needn't look so surprised, hissed Nausicaa as she sidled up next to him. Word got around about the big hulking nudist washing up on the beach, and everyone wanted to hear that story. Well, who told them about it? Odysseus hissed back. Well, I don't know, Nausicaa replied, but from the look in her eye, he reckoned she did. Just be grateful you're not still wearing the dress, she smirked, and with that she disappeared into the crowd as the king stood to greet him. Welcome, stranger, said Alcinous. I trust you are well rested and fed. I am indeed, my lord. Thank you for your hospitality, said Odysseus, bowing. As you can see, we have quite the crowd gathered, and before you tell your tale, we thought we might show you a little of Phaeacian skill. Bring forth the athletes. Alcinous clapped his hands, and young men stepped out of the crowd, all of them rippling with muscles and in the prime of youth. They began to wrestle, box, vault, race, throw javelins and discuses, all to much ooing and ahhing from the crowd. Odysseus nodded his head and smiled along, but he'd been in Troy with some of the mightiest of the mighty. He'd foot-raced with Achilles, he'd arm-wrestled with Ajax, he'd even boxed with Diomedes. Compared to them, these were untried boys playing games. Eventually, it all came to an end, and the winner, an insanely good-looking young man named Euralius, was crowned with a smug grin. Odysseus expected it all to be over, but then Euralius opened his big mouth. And you, stranger, will you join us in the games? He looked Odysseus up and down with a mocking smile. No, I know your type. Merchant captain, right? More used to giving orders than getting your hands dirty. Do you even compete? And he leapt high in the air and did a backflip as the crowd applauded. Now, Odysseus was known around the world for his craftiness and wisdom. But he was also a warrior with a warrior's temper, and something about this smug little show-off had just rubbed him up the wrong way. Standing, he smiled coldly at the youth. Euralius, was it? Let me give you some advice, my friend. Don't challenge people who you don't know. You might butt off more than you can chew. And with that, he picked up a discus and hurled it so hard that it embedded itself six inches in the far wall. 
There was silence in the hall, except for the thrumming of the still-vibrating discus as the crowd looked Odysseus up and down in a brand new light. Huh? Who are you? gasped Euralius. My name is Odysseus, king of Ithaca, said Odysseus. And boy, have I got a story to tell you. <laughs>